Well, hello everyone. I am super pumped about today's announcements and today's message because Judy Jones will be teaching us today. So first let me just get these announcements out of the way and then let's listen to what God has given Judy to teach us. Uh, first things first, communicating. I am trying my hardest to communicate, but I, I still need your help. And, and by that I mean, pick one of these venues so that I know that you're staying connected with me. It's um, they got YouTube, uh, Instagram, Snapchat. I text a lot of times. I, I also have Marco Polo. Um, emailing, uh, aka MailChimp. Uh, so please pick one and let me know what that is and that way I can stay connected with you. And then check this out. We are going to be doing humongous New Life Church families like talent show and we're going to do it over Zoom. And so on May 3rd, after second service, so from 6.30 till 7.30, we're going to go live and you bring your talent and you showcase it. But if you're gonna do that, if you wanna showcase your talent, you actually have to, listen here carefully, sign up on nlc.today and then you can show off your skills. It's gonna be really fun, really exciting for everyone and it's gonna be super laid back. I will be hosting with uh, Melissa and we're just gonna have a good time. We're gonna mute those who need to be muted and unmute those who are doing their, their amazing talent. All right? So without further ado, let me introduce you to Judy Jones. Hey guys, just thought I'd pop in and uh, give you a little talk today. I'm not, um, you know, Pastor Steve by any stretch of the imagination. As you can see, I'm like, my hair is not even done. Um, this is my new normal. Uh, I'm not liking it at all. Uh, I'm sure none of you guys are either. Um, so this is, uh, this is not what any of us ex has expected. So let's, um, I'm going to take this off because it's really hot. And um, we're going to talk today a little bit about a man named Jonah. Uh -huh. Now, Jonah was just a normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill guy just like us. He um, was just going about life and when he heard God's voice. And um, God said to him, "Let's, uh, you need to go to Nineveh. And um, this is a city far away for him. And you need to pass judgment on the people that live in that city because they're not doing the things that I have asked them to do. <clears throat> Much like our country um, and we're not probably doing the things that God has asked us to do. So um, Jonah said, um, I don't think so and he ran the other way. You guys hear from God, I know you do. And I, you're probably saying, no, I, I really don't. I really don't hear from God. Um, but he doesn't speak to everybody in the same way and we've talked about this many times before um, sometimes people will hear a still small voice inside that tells them what to do um, sometimes it's just a knowing in your head or in your heart that this is what you're supposed to do it's not going to be this booming voice from heaven that you know we hear in movies and, and see stuff like that you shall not pass it's not gonna be that. And um, sometimes we may be scared and um, it may freak us out, just like Jonah. So um, Jonah heard God say, go to Nineveh. And he said, mm, no, I'm going the other way. So he got up and he went in the opposite direction. He went down to this port city and he bought a ticket on a boat. Um, so that wouldn't be my first choice, but that's his. So he got onto the ship and um, he went down in the bottom of the boat and um, this huge storm started um, raging. And um, for any of you that have been on boats in storms, not my favorite. I'm not a fan of water. So um, that would freak me out. So the guys 
that were on the ship started to pray to their gods. Now, they didn't serve the same god that Jonah served. They served a different god. And uh, so when they got nowhere, the captain went downstairs, woke up Jonah and said, Hey, what's up? You need to start praying to your god because our gods are not doing anything. So um, maybe your God will pay attention to us and spare our lives because they knew that their ship was going down if they didn't have him. So they surrounded him. He went upstairs. They surrounded him on the ship and said, who are you? What is going on here? What the heck? Why, do we, why are we having this storm? And Jonah answered and said, I'm a Hebrew and I worship the Lord God of heaven who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this because they've heard of God. Why did you do this? What should we do to stop this storm? They wanted to know. What the heck do we do now? And Jonah said, throw me into the water. I probably would have said, get in the lifeboats and let's get the heck out of here. Get me out of here! But he was, he was adamant. He knew what God wanted to do because he knew that he was not being obedient to God. And sometimes um, we're not obedient to God too. And um, through all of this pandemic and virus and, and whatever, this mess, um, we all have a place. We all have something that God wants us to do. And if you haven't asked God what he wants you to do, I would encourage you to do that. Um, it might not be anything um, huge. It might just be talking to a friend and, and helping them through this hard time. I know that I have had a really hard time with this. Um, I have suffered with depression my whole life. And um, for any of you that knows that being in an isolated situation is not good for somebody who fights with depression. So I've really had to push myself to get out I'm coming up. and um, just see things that God wants me to see. As I was praying, I said, God, what do you want me to do through all of this? Because, I, you know, I'm, I'm a nobody, just like the rest of us. I don't have money. I don't have, you know, I don't have a name for myself. I don't, I'm not, you know, a pastor or anything like that. And I, I definitely heard God's voice say, <clears throat> feed my sheep. Now, that's biblical. It's in the Bible. And um, I knew exactly what he meant because I make food all the time for people. So what I've been doing is making meals for people who are in need, who um, have started to run out of food, or people who haven't gotten their checks yet and need food, um, just to help them out a little bit. And I'm also working at a local outreach downtown called Seeds of Hope. I am making bag lunches for people. So I'm feeding his sheep. I'm feeding the people that he loves. And um, it's not an extravagant job. It's not um, gonna get me in the papers, which I don't really care about anyway, but it's what God wants me to do. It's a small piece of the puzzle for him. So I am honored to do that. Um, but let's go back to Jonah. So he told them to throw him overboard threw Jonah into the sea. The storm stopped at once. Whoa! The sailors were amazed at God's power and they vowed to serve him. So I just wonder what exactly was Jonah thinking when he went into the water? I mean, was he thinking, oh, maybe I should have listened, doggone it. Or, um, I wonder if I could swim to shore and still run away from God. Or, yeah, I really deserve this and I should have listened. So, um, 
the Bible says that God arranged for a big fish. Now I know you've heard the story and most stories it's been a whale. The Bible says it's a big fish. So we don't really know what it was. But it swallowed him. And he stayed inside the belly of a fish for three days. Okay? Now if any of you have been fishing and gutted a fish, the inside of a fish is the nastiest thing you've ever seen. It is slimy, it is nasty, it smells bad. You stink. I think you're gonna have a good Christmas, all right? You smell like beef and cheese, you don't smell like Santa. No. It's dark. Um, Jonah didn't have matches and a candle, he didn't have a sleeping bag, he didn't have a tent, he didn't have any of the creature comforts of home. Because, like us right now, we've been isolated for seven weeks. He was in there for three days. That is 72 hours, 4,320 minutes. Now that seems like a lot, but compared to seven weeks that we've been stuck, but we have been stuck at home with our beds, our jammies, uh, food, water, electricity, internet, TV, our families, games, you name it, we've got it. He was stuck in this slimy, disgusting, creepy fish for three days. Which would you rather have? Really? So, I'm glad it was him and not me. I'd rather be at home in my jammies. So I know you're probably saying, so what the heck does this have to do with me? Well, it's very similar to the times that we're in. We've all been like Jonah at times. We have heard God say to us to do something. Very simple, I'm sure. Or somebody else has told us to do something like our governor, our president, our teachers, our parents. And rather than put ourselves out and do what they've asked us to do, we run in the other direction. Talk to the hand. I chose to obey God and feed people. Now, I'm not doing this huge thing, and he's not asking any of us to do a huge part. He just wants each one of us to do our part, okay? Your part is not my part. My part is not your part. But God has something for each and every one of us. No matter how long this thing lasts, we each have a part. So, if you don't choose God and the things that he wants you to do, it might just be Jonah in the belly of a fish. In the meantime, choose the good things. I would say that you guys should keep on top of each other, call each other, write each other, email, text, Marco Polo, whatever it can be. We need to hang in together. And if we don't, I think um, I will drown. And I know that Jonah would have drowned if God hadn't stepped in and saved him with that fish. So it may be a yucky way to save somebody in the belly of a fish, but I think that was God's grace for Jonah. And I want you to just encourage you guys to choose God today and choose to reach out and embrace this time. And I wanna pray with you before we end and I love you guys and Pastor Steve and I and, and the other leaders are all praying for you and we want you to know that you are important to us so Father God I thank you for these kids today I thank you for their families I thank you for the friendships that you have brought out of this youth group I thank you for our leaders Lord and Father in this time 
in the belly of the fish where we are right now, Lord God, I pray that you would bring comfort, that you would um, let us hear your voice through it all and let us hear the small things that you want us to do. Father, don't let, us, let it overwhelm us. And Lord God, I thank you that you have sent this times to refocus us. And Lord, I pray that you can um, encourage us all and build us all up in your love today. And I want you to know that we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. See you later.